to try to get a handle on Taylor's theorem that show that the exponential function equals its McLaurin series. Taylor's theorem works on intervals. So we'll start by looking at the exponential function on a finite interval. The interval we've decided will be centered at zero. And this is the McLaurin series. So the Taylor series is centered at zero as well. And what we want, if the exponential function is to equal its McLaurin series, is for the remainder to go to zero. For technical reasons, which we'll see later, what we're going to show is that the absolute value of R sub n goes to zero. However, these are the same. The remainder goes to zero if and only if the absolute value of the remainder goes to zero. So showing this will show this. Let's remind ourselves of what the remainder looks like. For the exponential function to equal its McLaurin series, this is what we need. Now, absolute values work well with quotients and products. That is to say, the absolute value of a product is the product of absolute values. And similarly for quotients. So we can rewrite this a little like so. And let's consider this part of the expression. The n plus first derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The exponential function is increasing. So from negative k to positive k, Positive k is where the exponential function takes on its greatest value. In particular, wherever this c is, it's somewhere between negative k and positive k, and e to the c. is therefore less than e to the k. So the n plus first derivative at c is e to the c, and it's less than e to the k. So here's what we want to go to zero. It's less than this. And now we'll see our justification for wanting these absolute values. It's greater than or equal to zero. 
And what we're going to do now is use the squeeze theorem. We have this string of inequalities and clearly as n goes to infinity, zero goes to zero. If as n goes to infinity, this also goes to zero, then the squeeze theorem says that this expression that's stuck between them must go to zero as well. And this is true. As n goes to infinity, this goes to zero for a fixed x. And that might not be immediate the obvious, but I think we can convince ourselves that it's true. Let's look at some fixed x and some large n. Here's our numerator. If x equals 2 and n equals 10, for example, and this is a pretty large number, but we have repeated multiplication in the denominator as well. And as long as n is significantly larger than x, the numbers we're multiplying in the denominator will, for the most part, be significantly larger than the numbers we're multiplying in the numerator. This is certainly much larger than this. And because of this pattern, as n goes to infinity, this does go to zero. And the squeeze theorem tells us that this remainder term goes to zero. And that is exactly what we needed for the function to equal its Taylor series, its McLaurin series. In this case, all we need is for the limit of the remainder to be zero, just what we found.